Do we have something very special for you at the Scott Laurie Gallery? Kirsty Lillico's Carpet Burns. It's a monumental show in more ways than one. I first discovered Kirsty's work when she won the Park and Drawing Prize, of course. Hugely controversial win, generated lots of conversation around what is a drawing and what can a drawing be. We grabbed Kirsty while she was in the gallery during the hang so she could talk us through some of the works in this show, in this short film. I used to make things, um, it's always been kind of textile based. I did a master's and I made a kind of uniform. So it was, it was I thought of it as kind of wearable sculpture for the body, um, as a container for the body. And from there I went, into, I was sort of thinking about modernism and the legacy of modernism and design and um, I thought about architecture as another layer of that protection for the body. And yeah, so that's what sort of led me into kind of the architectural floor plan as a kind of form. It's called Carpet Burns, um, which uh, just brings some humour, I guess, um, to, the, to the work. Hopefully people see the kind of, the humour in it and the, I think they're pretty sexy, you know. So maybe people will hopefully see that. And it's kind of a survey of, I would say, about the last seven years of my practice, um, including the first carpet sculpture I made, um, and then the one I've, to the one I've made this year. I was kind of, I was using like paper, like sheet material, I guess, and um, and then I was kind of looking at. Uh, the work of Robert Morris, who was a post-minimalist sculptor in the 60s, um, and he used industrial felt. My studio was next to a um, carpet warehouse, or like a, they would rip out carpet. And I kind of saw it and I just thought, oh, that could, that has potential. It's free material with some potential for like drapery and, and falling in a way that's sort of similar to um, industrial felt. It has, it has a particular way that it, I mean, I have to work with it rather than against it. Like I, you know, when I make them, I like to kind of work slowly and make my cuts slowly and put them on the wall and see how they fall. Um, the sort of abject quality of it appeals to me in a way, or it, it sort of conceptually, it suits what I'm trying to say um, uh, about failure and about hubris and about, um, you know, big ideas for how people should live. Uh, so, you know, the fact that it's been, you know, the, it, actually the second-hand carpet is a lot better for my purposes than new carpet, because it's, if it's worn and really threadbare, it, it falls so much, so much better um, than new stuff. Yeah, the fact that it's, it's, it's associated with um, feet and, you know, and walking on, um, means that it, it has this kind of yeah, abject quality, this sort of slightly, people feel slightly disgusted by it at times um, when they find out, you know, that it is second hand or out of a skip or whatever, um, yeah. So this was shown, this was made it's sort of slight in a site-specific way. It was made for a particular space, which was the um, rear window at, at the Dunedin Public Art Gallery. Uh, the floor, it's an architectural floor plan, um, and it's based on the, the design of the University College, which is a hall, hall of residence at U, uh, Otago University. I guess it's that particular architecture is um, what's known as brutalism. So that was sort of my first Kind of inspiration in terms of architecture. I kind of I grew up in Upper Hutt, which has got a lot of all the council buildings are that sort of co co raw concrete style, um, and so I was always fascinated with them when I was growing up. Um, and yeah, that that's kind of what I chose to explore when I first kind of started making these. That's called Machine for Living. 
So the quote, I think, is, is uh, from Le, Le Corbusier, um, and it's uh, something like, what is it? A house is a machine for living in. Um, and this is, uh, a, this is an apartment building in Marseille um, by Le Corbusier. Uh, it's the first one I made, and I was kind of thinking about, you know, how especially those modernist architects had grand schemes very utopian ideas about how people should live or how design could be used to improve people's lives. And very rational, sort of like, if you come up with the, the ideal scheme for living, you know, that, that's gonna solve a lot of problems. Um, yeah, so I was sort of looking at that, those kind of ideas now, where are we now with it? How do we think about those ideas now? Um, and, and has it failed? Like. Has that way of thinking failed? Where are we? Where are we with? I mean, we're in the middle of a housing crisis, particularly in Wellington. So, in terms of the rationalisation of space, I'm not sure. I'm sure not. Not sure we had it figured out in this country. Maybe he he did have some. You know, we could have applied some of those ideas here a bit more. Mm. So that's called Mother. I'd been thinking about that sort of language of, um, of the 70s um, sort of textile art or the fibre art movement in America, which had a lot of um, sort of female imagery in it. I feel like those, that as a movement or was quite, was, is quite influential on my work, even though I'm using an industrial material and, and a quite a quite a simple process, you know, I cut with a craft knife. There's no real, you know, craft skill involved, whereas they were weaving and um, things like that. I was, again, it was a desire to make something very dark in colour, uh, and also that had a kind of hulking, enveloping presence, because I feel like my my work does have a real presence, sort of almost, they're almost bodies. So that was the impetus or the, the impulse was to make something like that. And then it came together kind of like a collage of, of using what I already had and also dyeing uh, other pieces to fit. And there's a pocket in it where pieces are sort of tucked in. So again, it's like a pouch. Um, you know, to reference the feminine. We were watching a film called Suspiria. It was, it's a remake of a 1970s horror film, um, Italian. And there, there's a creature in it called Mother. And she's, she's a, like a witch and she's made out of, she's kind of collaged together out of all these pieces of, of young women. And it's like, yeah, it's pretty disgusting. But, <laughs> I like, so she's called Mother, and, and so that also kind of, and I'd already been thinking about the title, and then sort of, I feel like this has a dark, witchy vibe to it, so I thought that was quite, quite a good connection. For me, it's just a chance to look at this kind of span of work together. So maybe if people are familiar with, have seen one of my pieces before, they'll be able to see the, this kind of connection over time and how it maybe is developed. Some of the work, I've, like I say, I've shown before, but behind glass, you know, so there's been a separation between the viewer and the work. And I feel that it's quite important to be occupying the same space as the work because, you know, there is, like I say, a bodily, they are like bodies and, I think with sculpture, it's, it, it's not enough to just see something in a photograph or, you know, you have to be, be with it because it has its own presence. Um, also, I've shown quite a bit in public galleries, you know, like quite large cavernous spaces. This is much more intimate. It's almost too much to say. You can't really, it's really hard to articulate what I get out of it. Um, but I love materiality, you know, I love materials and exploring ideas 
and bringing those two things together, you know, the conceptual and the physical material.